How you guys doing? It is Thursday, May 5th, 2022 AD. Uh, I saw on TKR Official, which is a real news source, TKR Official on, uh, what is that, Telegram? Happy Cinco de Mayo to all of the, or de Mayo, I hate mayo. Mayo, mayonnaise is disgusting. Uh, happy Cinco de Mayo to all of the Italians. Yes, we love the Italians. Indeed. So cool. <laughs> Will this show be spammed by, by media matters like JLP's was? Really? Was that, did that happen, Moose Simpson? It is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. Two more days of frog eyes, or shall I go the whole month? Frog eyes. I could go the whole month. Just say the word. I'm going to cover an abortion article from Huffington Post, what doctors want you to know ab about abortion right now. There are tons of misconceptions about abortion and how it affects people's health. Here's the truth, according to the real experts. And this woman writing for Huffington Post, which is a far-left outlet that marginalized themselves trying to call Trump not serious, not a serious candidate. They, uh... She referenced two women, two female doctors or scientists. Give me a break. Academics. And there is a black female, uh, based black female Republicans, multiple ones running for Congress and Senate. Sign me up. No, but one of them has a nice story about not being aborted. Her mother got, was, con her mother conceived her, uh, you know, like, Got pregnant at like age 11. Wow. She claims it was rape. I don't know. I could not independently verify. All that and your calls. You can call in, guys. 888-775-3773. But anyway, let's get right on with the show. One, two, three, four. Oh. you guys doing? I am fine. I am wearing a get a job t-shirt. I don't know if this is still available on the get a job Teespring store. Perhaps I could look it up for you guys. Teespring.com slash stores slash get a job. But it says savage moments and it has a cool drawing of JLP in space. He's like bigger than the planets. Or are those water droplets or something? I'm not sure. Uh, teespring.com slash stores slash get a job. You know, Jesse Lee Peterson has, uh, t-shirts as well. You can go to rebuildingtheman.com slash stores. Uh, Hake, I have a Teespring. Indy, they do have a hoodie for this. Classic pullover hoodie in this, uh, with this design on it. In multiple different colors and sizes, up to 3XL, which is... Pretty decent, all, all the way down to small. So, support get a job. Support get a job, guys. I do. You can. It's uh, get a job. Puts out the Jason Lee Peterson Savage Moments. It's a YouTube channel, and we've never met him. He just d does it on his own. Great, uh, Jason Lee Peterson Savage Moments. Very cool. You know, I have. Can I read super chats, guys? Would you mind in my reading super chats? Because there, there were a ton that I did not get to yesterday, late in the show. Because I, I guess I got carried away talking about some topic or other. So let me read a... In fact, there was a super chat from two days ago that I did not read. It came in late. Well, later in the show. From Fernandez T. Fernandez T. Happy Cinco de Mayo, Fernandez T. I don't know if you would appreciate that, but... 
Uh, he gave a super chat on Odyssey, who st- and he stated, "Ain't no, I ain't no Bible expert, but the Bible never shows God using natural weather to punish people. When they asked Jesus why those people died when the tower fell on them, he said, blank happens. Paraphrasing, of course. He didn't write blank. He wrote I-S-H, but I don't want to say that because maybe the kids would repeat it. <laughs> and I try to keep it, uh, keep it kosher for the children, right? So that the parents can uh, let their kids overhear the Hake report. Or maybe, they're lis- maybe the children are listening intently to Hake. Who knows? So uh, Jesus said, it happens. I almost feel bad saying it happens. Stuff happens. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you know what? I was halfway joking around. A couple of days ago, I showed some awesome footage. You know, it was covered up by the CNN Chiron, the lower thirds, of the tornadoes. Or w- one tornado in particular. The crazy tornado. Well, DJ Onpar reminds us, the flood? And he puts a question mark at the end. <laughs> Locusts? Asks GJ, DJ on paw. Well, I guess you're more of a Bible thumper than Fernandez T, but you didn't know God using natural weather to punish people. And I suggested maybe God, maybe God allowed the tornadoes to hit Kansas and Nebraska and Florida because of abortion. But I was, you know, I was kidding around. Not that I dismiss the, uh, that it's possible. I'm just saying. I don't know. But thank you, Fernandez T. Appreciate the support. Nice to see you. Odyssey. O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the Hake Report. By the way, press one if my audio is working on Odyssey. O-D-Y-S-E-E. Press two if it's not working. And I guess you wouldn't press two because uh, you can't hear me there. Or maybe you would because you're hearing, listening to me by some other means. Past couple days we've had problems. Thank you, Fernandez T. Oh, shout out, Danny. Thank you, guys. Hello, everybody. I'm streaming on multiple different platforms, as you may know. As Mador stated yesterday in response to my coverage of... Oh, yeah, I was talking about J.D. Vance, the based Republican lawyer... Um, married interracially to an India gal whom he met in law school. So I'm joking a little bit about the based thing, but I, he, he might turn out to be an okay guy. I support his candidacy. I think he won his uh, primary. J.D. Vance, he's a 37-year-old politician or would-be politician running for office in Ohio. So vote for him, Ohioans including Mays, if you're in his district to vote for him. All right? Uh, And there was Ron Howard did a movie based on a book that this guy wrote um, called Hillbilly Elegy. Ron Howard is a... He's that white guy from Happy Days, right? That white, red-haired guy? And now he's old? I think. Or am I confusing him with something else? somebody else? Asador states, if Ron... I don't know if Ron Howard is a Christian or not, but he is a regular white person, not one of those particular non-Christians that Hollywood is full of. Well, thank you, Asmador. Appreciate that. And addressing Bobby in uh, Texas. Bobby in Texas called in to fact check on Mays, because Mays called in and said, Trump let out thieves and criminals and black criminals and white criminal thieves who were in jail like his son-in-law's father, and that's Jared Kushner's father, Charles Kushner. As Asmodor states with the Super Chat, Charles Kushner's charges that he was sentenced and pardoned for included falsifying tax returns, making illegal campaign contributions, which Bobby was right about, and retaliating against a witness. And he cites an article in uh, The Real Deal. Dot com. Charles Kushner gets a presidential pardon. Landlord and head of Kushner companies served prison time uh, on charges including retaliating against a witness. Wow. 
The Kushners are a crime family, goes on Asmodor. He writes at the Super Chat, very nasty, underhanded people. Yeah, it seems like it's, it's almost like, I don't know, it's, it's become like a culture among them, seemingly. Jared had a huge hand in Trump's failures as a president, says Asmodor. If you're minimizing the crimes of the Kushner, of a Kushner, to own Mays, you are, you've lost the plot. Wow, okay. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Charles Kushner, he also says, pleaded guilty to 18 different crimes in total, including hiring a prostitute to seduce his brother, secretly videotaping the act and sending the tape to his sister-in-law. Wow. And he likes an article from Yahoo um, News. And uh, see if it works. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. See if I can see if I can pull up this article. Do, do, do. Come on. Oh, what's going on? Never mind. Uh, I will trust his source. Thank you. Generally, generally, he gives accurate info. Sean WX25 gave a super chat over there on streamlabs.com slash the hate report. Just have to sh- catch up on these guys. I appreciate you bearing with me. Um, John WX25 says, White libs are the filthiest animals on this planet. Whoa. They have no allegiance to anything but killing babies and supporting everything evil. Every evil. Any country hates America, then count the libs in on it. Oh, okay. They support the countries that hate us. Yeah, I suppose so. Thank you very kindly. Just trying to pull up this thing. What's percent two, guys? Or percent two F? Slash? Maybe so. Indeed, I was able to pull it up. Thank you, uh, Asmodor. He gave me a link that didn't work at first for me, but now it is. All right. I think that's everything. Thank you, John WX25. I don't know if those are normal whites. Normal whites tend to be Christians. You know? It's ridiculous. But we are at 14 minutes after. Let me see how fast I can do this. You can call in 888-775-3773. But I want to I came across this article. It was a push notification, meaning it got sent to my phone from Apple News. And Apple News is far left enemies of America. They don't create news. They just push out their inf- the propaganda to you. By the way, it is Thursday tonight. Is what is Men's Forum. First Thursday of the month, Men's Forum. Always excellent. Always a highlight. Don't miss it. But I came across this article. Huffington Post on abortion. What doctors want you to know about abortion right now. And this is from Huffington, Huff Post Life, Wellness, Wellness, the Healthy Living section by, it's an article by Julia Rice, Reese, R-I-E-S, Reese. Is that spelled the same as Raul Reese? Remember Raul Reese? Raul Reese? On assignment for Huffington Post, out yesterday, May 4th, 2022, there are tons of misconceptions about abortion and how it affects people's health. Here's the truth, according to the real experts. (laughs) And she cites two, like I said, two so-called experts. And there's some gems of quotes in the way that this article was written, as well as quotes from the female so-called experts of this. So this may take a little bit of time. I'm going to try to plow through it uh, fast. By the way, I may also cover that black funeral thing that was held at a club in Washington, D.C. with the guy propped up. Not that I have images of it, but I have a news report about it. Uh, You may have heard about it on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. I looked it up. It was sure enough. It was true. But anyway, the article starts out since 1973. Roe v. Wade has protected the right of all Americans 
all Americans to access safe and legal abortions. And though a handful of states are passing legislation that will protect the right to get an abortion, so-called right, it's not a right, 20, many others, 26 to be exact, are expected to quickly ban or restrict abortions. So I heard that from Justice Alito, from his first draft of this uh, Supreme Court opinion that got leaked, it was a first draft of, a, of an opinion written back in February by Justice Alito, Samuel Alito, that got leaked just the other day by a criminal. I call it a criminal. Probably a her, but I don't know. Women t- like to break the rules, bend the rules. But there are males who do that too. Um, that said that there were 30 states that had outlawed abortion. And now 26 are going to re-outlaw abortion if and when, hopefully when, but we don't know, in June or whenever the Supreme Court does it, they overturn Roe v. Wade. Hopefully they do and overturn Casey versus Planned Parenthood of Southeastern, Planned Parenthood of Southeastern PA. Uh, if this happens, millions of people in the United States will no longer be able to access safe abortion care. Abortion care. Wow, why are you adding words to it? Abortion care within their communities. And you note that they use people and Americans rather than women because Huffington Post pretends that men can get pregnant too, right? It's fake news. It's non-binary transgender propaganda, right? All false. If this happens, millions of people, oh yeah, I said that, despite the misinformation buzzword that swirls around the internet and beyond, abortions are extremely safe procedures. (laughs) Extremely safe. Wow. Let's do it. It's, it is, oh no, hold on. They're also incredible common. I think that this woman may be English as a second language. It's supposed to be incredibly common. Very interesting, huh? Incredibly common, admits the Huffington Compost. Usually they say, oh, it's supposed to be safe, legal, and rare. But no, it's incredibly common. About one in four women, this lady writes, will have an abortion by the time they are 45, and in many cases, they are (laughs) life-saving. Which, we debunked that. Thank you to Chris over here, who uh, texted me this information. Um, As far as to reasons for getting an an abortion, uh, he linked linked this this, uh, Joel Davis post on Telegram that said... The woman's life was endangered by the pregnancy. It's 0.065%. So it's just over half of one-tenth of one percent. <laughs> uh, that's many to them. Many sa- are, can be life-saving. Many cases, they're life-saving. One in four women will have an abortion. Yikes. That's not rare. Bill Clinton lied. He said, I want abortion to be safe, legal, and rare. No. No, you don't. You want it to be incredibly common. One in four, 25% of females, sluts, in my opinion. It is a common procedure. It is very safe, and I can't emphasize that enough. This draft ruling is egregious. It is basically a war against women, says the first of two experts, only two experts cited in this uh, article. According to the real experts, there's two of them. (laughs) Dr. Melissa Simon is this first expert, Northwestern Medicine, OBGYN, told the Huffington Post. And I have a picture of this Melissa Simon woman. It's a female. Looks like a real female to me anyway. There she is. I don't know if that's a Christian woman. I wouldn't think so, though. Northwestern University, Feinberg School of Medicine. Vice Chair for Research, Gynecology, blah, blah, blah. Institute for Public Health and Medicine. Center for Health Equity Transformation. She's the director of that center. What a psycho, huh? Health equity. Another buzzword. Commie buzzword. So she said that it's basically a war against women. This is the real experts, right? Here's what people get wrong about abortion. Let me see if I can plow through this, guys, because it's kind of long. A report from 2018 examined the safety of various methods of abortion 
And this one I have not looked into, but listen to listen to these methods of abortion. Medication, aspiration, which to me sounds kind of like asphyxiation, I'm not sure. Dilation and evacuation is is a third idea. And induction, which I'm afraid to look. I'm afraid to look some of these ways up. And this report from 2018 concluded abortions are safe and effective, just like the vaccine. Abortions safe and effective at killing the babies. Without hurting the mother too much, I guess. (laughs) It's also well known delaying abortion care. There's that buzzword again. Abortion care increases the risk of complications. Some states require... So they want you to get it ASAP, right? Some states require doctors to tell their patients, this one is interesting, I've brought this up before, that there's a link between breast cancer and abortion. Some states require this. Very interesting. Did you know that? The ABC link. Despite the fact that many high-quality studies have put this question to rest, according to the other expert, this one is another woman, Dr. Jennifer Kearns, K-E-R-N-S. Associate Professor in the Department of Obstetrics, Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Jennifer Kearns is the other expert. What a mess. I I think I have a picture of her, too. She's (sighs) terrible. Yes, I've heard of that link, says Lisa Fox. I mean, Lisa on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I've heard of it, too. In fact, we interviewed Dr. Joel Brind, B-R-I-N-D. Dr. Joel Brind, who said that there is indeed, because the later in life that you have a child, the more likely you are that you wait. The later you wait to have a child, the more likely you are to develop breast cancer. It's better to have it younger than older. Have the children younger than older. It's healthier for a, let's say a 13-year-old, God forbid, gets pregnant, like the Virgin Mary. It's better for the Virgin Mary or any other 13-year-old that God forbid gets pregnant, or God ordained in Mary's case, right? Was Mary 13? Some speculated that she was. It's better for the child to carry the baby and have the baby than to abort the baby and then wait till like age 35, because you disrupt the process of your body. You're playing God, you don't know. (laughs) You don't know what you're doing to your body. And there is a um, political motivation to uh, suppress this information. So I really don't know what the truth is as to the abortion breast cancer link. There may be, there may not be. It's hard to get to the truth. You know, the people who are are pro-life may be too quick to assume something is true when it may not be. Doctor, but the pro-abortion people are very dishonest. Let me show, let me see this Dr. Jennifer Kearns woman, just to show you. This is the other expert. Two experts. Oh, gosh. Looks like, uh, doesn't that look like Brett Baer? (laughs) Sorry, Brett Baer. (laughs) Of, uh, Fox News. Looks like Brett Baer's sister. But anyway, hopefully it's not. Brett Bear is a Catholic. This woman doesn't seem like a Christian. Uh, she's a director. She's an associate professor at UCSF, San Francisco. Not morally straight part of the country, by the way. Others fear that abortions can cause infertility, but research has not found a link between abortions and the ability to conceive in the future. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Because I used to work with Mexicans in, my, uh, in the cabinet shop where I used to work. And one of my Mexicans, he said that his sister was on, not abortions, but so-called birth control, the pill. And after she got off the pill, it took her some years before she could conceive. Wow. Or it took her some time before she could conceive. So you don't know what you're throwing off, how, what, how you're maybe throwing off your body, whether it's abortion or uh, the pill or whatever. Baby killer eyes is only two sexes, yeah. 
Interesting, huh? Another long-running mistruth, according to this Huffington Post article, is that abortions increase the risk of developing mental health issues. Yeah, because we've talked about how women suffer from guilt. Plagued by guilt. There was a, one young woman who, who called my show just yesterday, plagued by guilt and judgment about her husband having paid, with his mother's money, for an abortion for his high school girlfriend. Friend, whom he got pregnant, allegedly, according to her. And to this day, it bugs her because this thing is coming back up in the news, and Satan's talking to her, and now she wants to judge. I mean, she thinks that she's judging her husband for something that happened before she even knew him. To this day, what a mess, huh? So yeah, when you do wrong, Satan talks to you. Ooh. Or somebody else does wrong, Satan talks to you. This is why women shouldn't really be in this fight so much. As men, as men, should be leading this fight and telling the women what to do with their bodies and with their, with the men's babies, right? <laughs> or God's babies. There is a huge body of work demonstrating that abortion in and, in and of itself does not cause mental health problems, says this Jennifer Kearns woman with the baby killer eyes. According to Only Two Sexes over there on D Live. Noting that people often feel relief after getting an abortion. Ah, <gasps> so do so do the transgenders when they sudden when they fall into the transgender stuff and just accept it. Oh, they feel a sense of relief short term, and then it doesn't. You know, the misery doesn't go away. The suicide rate doesn't really go down. Hey, has gardeners. No, man. <laughs> Talking about cabinet shop worker. One of my installers. What we do know is that unwanted p- pregnancies can cause significant maternal depression and p- parenting stress. And those mental health issues don't clear up with time. They're often long-lasting, afflicting women who w- carry the unwanted pregnancies to term well into their 30s, 40s, and 50s. It's funny, they act like, like they had to have sex. They had to have sex. You can't stop from having, getting pregnant. You just have to have sex. You don't have to have sex. Uh, even in the setting of using contraception and safe sex practices, having the option of an abortion is critical to life and both physical and mental health of the woman, said this Simon woman, the first woman, Melissa Simon, the first of the two experts. (laughs) Many anti-abortion bills have been labeled heartbeat bills. This nomenclature is wildly misleading. Just having cardiac activity does not mean the fetus, trying to dehumanize the baby, if born at that moment, would be able to survive, therefore kill it. (laughs) That's what Melissa Simon says. Don't listen to Simon. Am I right? That's enough for that. I'm going to do more on this because I want to break it up. Can I break it up? I'll tell you how restricting abortion impacts people's health and livelihoods next and what the fall of Roe v. Wade could mean for quote-unquote health care. But I feel like I don't want to go on too long with this Huffington Post compost article. I'll get back to it. How's that? Does that sound good? Let me get to a, um, a call before I get to Super Chats. Roger in Arizona wants to talk about abortion. Roger in Arizona, how are you doing? Hey, how's it going? Uh, hey, uh, how are you doing? Doing fine, thank you. Hey, I uh, just had a, a quick comment. You know, the, I was uh, listening to... Jesse Lee Peterson, and then a guy called in and said that usually women are like 98%. Uh, uh, he thinks that 98% of the, the women are pro-choice, you know, and it, it seems like a... Who uh, said we, that? Who said that 98% of women are pro-choice? Just a caller and uh, on the oh. Jesse Lee Peterson show, you know, and uh, at first I thought, like, that's a real high number, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's... Uh, maybe 98% of Democrat females. Well, but here's the thing, though. I started. Sam from like, New York like, said that. Yeah, but I, uh, when I heard it, I thought, like, that's an outrageous number. It's too high. Right. And I started thinking about it a little bit of the uh, women around my family. And uh, because he was saying that they said, well, I wouldn't have it, but then, you know, I wouldn't judge other women. Right. They didn't have it, right. Yeah. So it was like, okay, so the numbers started increasing right in my head and thinking, yeah, but they. Uh, uh, you know, the, it, it's just one of those uh, words, how they phrase it. And then I started uh, questioning and saying, well, a lot of women, if you, if you ask the question, 
if a woman gets, uh, you know, raped, you know, then they will say, oh, okay, in that case, it's, it's good. So that's also like a sign of being pro-choice, right? Say that again. Yeah. If there, you know, if a woman is asked what would happen if if a woman gets uh, raped, would they, you know, and then they would consider abortion in that case, right? Yeah, unfor- it doesn't make sense, so, but yeah, they do. So, so that would also increase uh, the, the, the pro-choice number up, right? And then, you know, oh, if yeah. you ask a, a, a person, a female, what uh, what would what, what would it happen to somebody that abort a baby, and they, you know, they they, they would not kind of say when, from uh, you know give the opinion for another woman that she should be in prison for because it's murder, right? They just say, well. Is wrong, but then they they would not say. You know, it's like if I'm walking down the street and I kick a, a pregnant woman in the belly, and and you know the kid is dead, I get charged with murder, right? Double murder if you kill the woman and the baby. Well, no, but if yeah. I just kill the, the oh, if you the just baby, kill the right? baby, yeah, so I I would be charged with murder, right? So if the female, like any any women, kill the baby, they should be thrown in jail. But if you ask. You know, most of the women, what do you think uh, other women that abort babies, should they be in prison? They, you know, they, they usually say no, you know, so, yeah. or they, they, they kind of let it fly by, you know, because they're, they try to sympathize in some weird way, and men usually don't side that direction. Right. Um, so, you know, when the guy said 98%, I thought it was high, but if he actually to it a little bit it, it's higher than what we think it is you know yeah uh, i don't know that was just my take on that i mean you know uh if we actually uh digest the uh the, the comment on him and uh, maybe he that's what he was going for but yeah he got me he got me thinking a little bit of uh interesting of how women yeah women just tolerate other things and that you know kind of tends to give you the idea that they're pro-choice you know because it's either you're firm on it or not you know yeah and uh if you if you let loose a little bit well that makes you pro-choice you know because it's murder right? yeah I don't know, that, that, uh, you know with the subject of uh abortion i just wanted to comment that i know I might be a little bit off no there. no you're fine this but, it's but, it's so true people fall for all these different exceptions and these exceptions mm-hmm. are so rare and I disagree with the people who want these exceptions, including people whom I respect and uh, admire, like Ann Coulter and Donald Trump. Therefore, the exceptions of, oh, you can abort in the case of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. I say only the life of the mother. Because rape well, and incest are I mean, not reasons to kill the baby. Yes, I mean, you're right. So. Yeah. There, I mean, I, I guess I, I would cite a little bit to call it when he said, if, if there's an, any exception that you make for abortion, that makes you a pro-choice, right? Right. If we if question fair the point. women more, more, you know, a woman calls, you know, later, uh, you know, after him and say, no, well, you know, I'm not pro-abortion, and then she started uh, uh, giving her view, but then she was like, well, the woman, woman can do with her body anything, right? Uh, whatever she wants, but don't kill the baby. It's like, but she's giving power to the women, telling her it's your body. You can, you know, you kind of do it. It's wrong, but it's your body. So it's like, it's like kind of giving her some some room to be pro-choice. You know? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my take. It's either you're firm or not. And e- even in the uh, when, when you're saying uh, if the uh, woman is gonna, you know, sit in there and she's internal bleeding or something and the baby's in the wound and, you know, in order to save the woman, but, you know, you can kill the baby, but then, you know, you gotta, I guess you gotta preserve whatever seems to be, uh, that it's gonna have a better chance of living. So right. I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still, uh, uh, debating whether it, it, there's circumstances where, um, you know, if the baby has more chances of living, then then you kill them and try to save the the, the woman. I'm, yeah. I'm debating that. Where um, uh, I don't know if it's a it's, it's well, obviously not being a doctor and myself and not talking to you know like doctors that conduct uh, those type of surgeries. If there is a science where you can determine, um, you know, whether you can save the baby or not, you know. But uh, it's uh, I mean, you don't go straight to kill the baby, so you can try to 
right uh, say the, the the women so that that is something that i'm still wondering and, and in all honesty i think that i've heard and i don't know if it's true mm-hmm. i've heard that in the case of the life of the mother the baby gets i mean the baby dies even without the act of killing the baby the baby ends up dying uh I don't know if that just means if the woman dies, the baby dies too. So, well, I don't know. And honestly, that's not that common. I think it would be a case-by-case yeah. situation. Like you said, you save, yeah. the, you save the life or lives that you can, and the ones that can't be saved. It used to be more common that a person would uh, be born and, and the, the mother would die giving childbirth to that person. You would... I feel like I heard that in, you know, reading the little bit of history that I've read. There are children who have been born and the mother died. So Yeah, I, I have a couple families where my grandma's one of those where uh, her younger sister, uh, you know, when she gave birth, her, the mother died. And that's how yeah. she was raised without, without a mother. And then obviously the, uh, his dad remarried and, and you know, you know kind of like, like yeah, a little bit of that, but yeah, that was more common, and you can actually uh, hear it in families, you know, here and there. Yeah, uh, but yeah, you're 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 right. And um, is it uh, okay if I ask you another quick question? And um, I don't know if you have an answer or not. Go ahead. Um, I'm uh, I'm struggling to uh, get into the silent prayer. You know, I can't seem to focus on it. <laughs> I don't know if you have any little advice that I can uh, take. Uh, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I guess try harder, all right? Well, it's not, I, I don't know if you want to, I don't know if try harder is the right word, but, uh, yeah. just have a discipline about it. That's my best advice. Do you have any advice for him on, on, he's struggling to do the silent prayer? Chris I, is here. I feel I need yeah, it. Yeah, you, you gave know, pretty like good advi- advice already, James, uh, to just do it. Yeah. Uh, even if you're... Like you say, whatever whatever it is that you're struggling with or whatever, I mean, just just sit through it. Like what you know, your mind's racing, whatever. You got the jitters, whatever. I mean, just just sit there. Also, you don't have to do it for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, don't keep a timer. Just sit there. All right. and do it. Nice. All right. Well, that, that, that was uh, pretty much it. I don't want to take the uh, lorry time. I don't know if you have any other uh, calls, but yeah, the, uh, I just want to make that big comment that you know, it's, it, it, the, the number is way higher than what we think about uh, women being pro-choice. And, yeah, that's uh, why you shouldn't allow the women. I, I, yeah. I'm I'm going to play a clip, a great clip, a tearjerker clip of a black woman who was the result of a supposed rape. Her mother was 12 when she had her. And uh, she's trying to run for con- for the Senate, and I'm not for these women being involved in making these decisions, yeah. even though she's for the right thing, apparent uh, supposedly. The, you're right; they will make exceptions that men who are logical and firm on uh, will not make. Yeah. So we should be running no, the show. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate uh, well, it, I Roger. Guess, uh, we'll, we'll wait and see, and we see. Hopefully, she does it. But yeah, uh, it, it, it's probably it. Um, I don't see it how it's that gonna happen. <laughs> we know female, you know, they get too more. I know. Yeah. All right. Well, Take care, man. Have a good day. Uh, hey, you, nice talking to you. You as well. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Um. Whew. Let me read a couple of super chats here. Single mom says women who opt for abortion, who still undergo postpartum, will still undergo postpartum as well as other phases of post-pregnancy. They're, often, they're not often treated because there's no baby. Also, could you ask the next progressive to define what equity means to them in a future debate? Thank you, single mom. Yeah, they'll go through postpartum, postpartum depression, or postpartum whatever, and other phases of pro- post-pregnancy, untreated because there's no baby. Oh, but they get a, re- a sense of relief. <laughs> uh, and the Huffing- Huffington Post wants to downplay how badly they suffer from their so-called mental illness of guilt. Spiritual death of guilt. False guilt. Uh, yeah, equity. Health equity. 
Give me a break. Thank you, single mom. John WX25 says the ruling frees states. This ruling, if the Supreme Court is to rule it, we still shall see. I like to not count my chickens before they're hatched. The ruling f- frees states to run the baby killing groomers to blue states where they belong, thus ultimately making it easier to round them up and turn them over to the blats f- as reparations. <laughs> I know you disavow, lol. Thank you, John. WX25. Taking care of businesses. It's a double edged sword, you know, when you allow for the cases of rape. Uh, for abortions, a woman who wants an abortion will just make up a rape accusation to get an abortion. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, one in four women will get an abortion by age 45. That's psych. That's crazy. So much for safe, legal, and rare. It's ridiculous. Even a few years ago, Taking Care of Business points out, young women thought that one in, I think it's one in five women, were raped in college campuses. Yeah. So-called sexual assault. So they claimed, dumb made-up statistic. Ridiculous. Early and mid-pregnancies rarely cause life-threatening circumstances for the mother. It's after the baby is in the last trimester where it can be saved, when most of the circumstances occur, you know, the tough circumstances uh, for the woman. But the baby can be saved through C-section in those circumstances. There's really no need to kill a baby when it can be removed and live, lived, meaning he or she, the baby. Yeah, exactly. You know what, let me play for you, before I get back to this Huffington Post article, I want to play for you this uh, piece that I came across this morning. A black female Republican Senate candidate, senatorial, U.S. Senate candidate, black female Republican, wasn't aborted. This is clip 11. This is almost five minutes long, guys. Bear with me through it. This is Kathy Barnett. And her Twitter is Kathy for, number four, truth. Kathy for truth. She tweeted, quote, I'm the byproduct of rape, according to her. My mother was 11 when I was conceived. In the world the left desires, I would never have been born. We need leaders with a steady hand to direct our nation through these difficult discussions. And so is she saying that she's one of those leaders? I mean, I like your story. Listen to her story, and then I'll tell you a little bit more. Here is Kathy Barnett's campaign video. Four minutes and 30 seconds long. Bear with me through this, and we'll, uh, we'll get through it. You'll like it. Maybe. Here it is. Clip 11, I think. It wasn't a choice. I grew up in southern Alabama, very rural, one-stop sign town called Nitchburg. Getting ready to go to college, I decided to go into the Army Reserves. But I had to go get my birth certificate, mainly because the name was different. The name I had always grown up with was Nelson, but then come to find out there was something completely different on my birth certificate. Clearly, I could have done the math and realized just how young my mother was when she gave birth to me, but it was never something that truly resonated with me until I looked at my birth certificate for the very first time and just kind of studied it. Her gender, they called her a Negro girl, and that was the first thing I saw, and it just kind of grabbed my heart. But then I saw her age, and she was 12. And that just really struck a chord in me because I realized just how young my mother was when something so horrible had visited upon her. Even to this day, it's a very hard word to say, but my mother was raped. Given her young age at 11 years old, my father being 21, they was hurt. We was all devastated. But my mother said, you know, you're pregnant, so we're going to get through this. And she helped me get through it. That's the mom. Her I mother. don't want to use the word choice. She was going to be born. I didn't have a choice to say, you're going to live. Or I'm going to abort you. That wasn't a choice for me. And I thank God it wasn't a choice for me. 
As a child, I knew no difference. I was loved and um, I felt loved. It gave me a greater appreciation for my mother. It helped me to forgive a lot of the mistakes someone at that age, having gone through such trauma, would have made in their own parenting. But it definitely made me become very adamant about the sanctity of life, of all life, regardless of how they arrived that I am <laughs> valuable, I'm worthy, and my life has purpose. Before the foundation of the world, God saw me and he decided that I would be. And he said in his word that not only did I see you, but I called you, I predestined you. And so as a Christian, I believe in the value of life, that when I was in my mother's womb, he was knitting me together. Even among Christians, even among staunch conservatives, an exception to the rule of being pro-life for many is in the case of rape. And yet my life has value. From me has come two very beautiful and charming and smart kids married to a wonderful husband. We've made a life for ourselves and none of this would have happened if the exception to the rule had applied regardless of how old you are and how the child was conceived, that child deserve a chance. And if I had to make that choice, where would I be at right now without my daughter? The hardest struggle for my mother, or the hardest thing for her to overcome, I think is just the effects of the trauma itself. And that is why I think it's so important to help people understand that the trauma has already been inflicted. The child should not be inflicted with the consequences that squarely belongs on the one who inflicted the trauma. You have to be able to see the difference. Aborting me would not have eased the trauma that my mother suffered. Aborting me would not have allowed me to be in a place today where I can now take care of my mother. It's just amazing to see them grow up. Regardless of how my life started out, I'm blessed. I'm not left with bitterness. I'm left with overwhelming sense of gratitude that not only did God see value in my life, but that my family saw value in my life. I'm very grateful for that. I'm eternally grateful that they chose to allow me to be born. Kathy Barnett for U.S. Senate. Doc Barnett for Senate.com. What a mess. Somebody said all that for vote for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a shame. But it makes a good point about you don't kill the baby just because of the rape. And Kathy, is it Kathy Williams? What's her name? Karen Williams asks, rape or statutory rape? And where is the father? I, I wonder where the father is anyway. Yeah, statutory rape or rape? The Negro girl? Mother? was 11 when she conceived this lady, Kathy Nelson, Kathy Barnett. Nelson, I guess, is that the father's name, or is that the mo- I don't know. Father was 21, so they knew who the father was, or at least the age of the father, but I don't- haven't heard. I wonder where the father was, I wonder where the husband is in this, but that's not- doesn't make you an, into a leader. It's a campaign video. It seems kind of off in that, in that sense. By the way, I think she said resignated. I think she meant resonated. I'm talking about the Negro girl. Why do we kill babies but not rapists, asks Nate Higgers, 42. Yeah, I think that some people have the death penalty or want the death penalty for legitimate rapists. It has to be forcible rape, you know. But nowadays, any, any willy-nilly, anything is willy-nilly called, quote-unquote, rape. You're called a rapist or a rape, you're called a rapist and a rape apologist if you question their, their cheapening of the word rape by calling stuff, calling anything rape. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Um, but according to another black female named Laverne Spicer who's also running for Congress, or run for Congress, that is my friend Kathy Barnett. She's in a statistical tie with Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz and Dr. Mehmet Oz specifically, and David McCormick. 
for Pasad- Pasadena, for PA Senate, Pennsylvania, U.S. Senate out of Pennsylvania, despite spending about 10% of what the others have spent and despite a media blackout. And that's from Laverne, that's according to Laverne Spicer, who's another black female Republican candidate for Congress out of Florida, 24th District, out of Miami, I guess. Dr. Oz is a Muslim? Is he a Muslim? Dr. Oz was this, he's this skinny kind of fit guy. Now, I guess he's a Republican. I think Trump endorsed him to be a senator out of, I keep on wanting to say Pasadena, Pennsylvania, PA. Kathy Barnett was born and raised, this Kathy Barnett woman whom you just heard go on and on. And I had to play that whole thing for you. I wanted to play that whole thing for you. Uh, There's so much there. She's like breaking down. You think she's going to be a leader? (sighs) Come on. And chill out, Rich. Hang tight. Dude, how long do I have to be on hold? Trust me, people are on hold longer than that. <laughs> Chill out, buddy. I will get to you. Hang tight. Have some patience, man. Uh, Kathy Bar- he disagrees with me on abortion. Hang tight. First time caller. He's not used to- he doesn't know how it works. Kathy Barnett was born and raised in rural Alabama, graduated from Troy University in Troy, Alabama, Bachelor of Science in Finance. Uh, after college, enlisted in the Army Reserve. Served, so-called, as a reservist 10 years before starting a career in corporate finance. In 2014, she began making appearances as an occasional political commentator for Fox News. After her YouTube video criticizing Michelle Obama went semi-viral. Don't know what semi-viral means. (laughs) Uh, In 2020, she was a resident of Virginia. She published a book, Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain, Being Black and Conservative in America. So she gets special treatment from the semi-conservative outlets because she's a black female Republican, I guess. Anyway, that's that for that. I have a picture of her, I think. Let me see. Yeah, these black female Republicans. So based. Not. Laverne Spicer is also a Republican candidate. Black female. I think she's a black. Looks like it to me. She's the other one. She's promoting this other gal. They're trying to take over the Republican Party. No, thank you. But thank you. I appreciate your, the other lady's story, Kathy Barnett's story. Very interesting. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be killing the baby in the cases of, of rape either. And with that, let me get to our very patient first-time caller, Rich, in San Francisco, California. Rich, how are you doing? Doing fine. Nice. Thanks for calling, man. Thanks for holding. Yeah, it's a long wait. It was not a long wait, buddy. <laughs> he waited less than 10 minutes, and he's like, long wait. People don't know. Like waiting at the, like waiting at the DMV. <laughs> That's you wait longer than 10 minutes at the DMV otherwise you're spoiled San Francisco, California. I don't think so, buddy But anyway, yeah So you're you're pro-life Yes, pro-life 100% pro-life. What's that mean? 100% pro-life Like you're 100% pro-life 100% I mean, you, pro-life. No, no abortion yeah. No abortion, but no death penalty either. No, that's not pro-life Death penalty is pro-life. That's kind of hypocritical. No, it's not hypocritical at all. Why why do you get to choose who lives and who dies? Uh, Why does a woman get to choose who lives and who dies? I'll tell you why I choose who lives and dies. I mean, you don't answer a question. Let me answer your your question. I'll tell you why I choose who lives or dies. Because I'm a man and I'm a Christian. And I got sense, unlike some people around here who might be talking to on the phone. It's, so let me tell you the difference. Crit. Let me tell you the difference between uh, the death penalty and abortion. The death penalty, sure. you're killing the guilty who have already committed a murder or maybe a forcible, legitimate so, rape. So and with it, uh, hold on, man, I'm still talking, Rich. And with the abortion, you are uh, the woman and the so called doctor are killing the innocent, a child, the man's child. Killing the innocent. Yeah. Killing the man's child. Yep. But you're still not saying how hypocritical it is to be one that chooses who lives and who dies. Speak up for whether me. Whether be guilty, whether they be guilty or innocent, 
you're still choosing who lives and who dies. Yeah, you're that's right, because it's up to it's because it's it's up to a sense of justice. No, it's being hypocritical. No, it's not being hypocritical. And not only that. How is it hypocritical? You haven't explained how it's hypocritical to kill the innocent and okay. save the to save the matter. save the it innocent and kill the guilty. Matter. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're innocent or guilty. You cannot choose who lives or who dies if you're pro life. There's That's not true. That's not true. You can't be That's pro life true. and then put an asterisk next to it. That's not either you're pro life or you're not pro life. No, you're What's not pro on? you're not pro life if you let a murderer live. Look, I'm pro-choice. I'm not going to tell a woman what to do with her reproductive system. Do you Simp. Can you create any laws for men Simp. on their and their reproductive <laughs> system? Are you black? No. Are you Hispanic? Maybe. Yeah. Does that matter? No, it just shows me a little bit where you're coming from. It doesn't uh, matter if you're Hispanic pro-life, or white Pro-life or black. means you're for innocent life. No, pro-life means you're for life. There's it doesn't, no pro-life. No, you don't, you don't tell me what it means. You have no sense. You don't tell me what pro-life means. No, you don't you have any have sense. No, you have no sense because you're being hypocritical. You're saying, I'm pro-life, but... No, there's no pro-life, but it's pro-life. I didn't say pro-life, pro-life, but. You said pro-life, no, you say but. pro-life, but it had, they have to be innocent. No, I didn't say but. I said pro-life means innocent life. No, pro-life does not mean innocent yes, life. Yes, it does. Pro-life just means pro-life. Uh-uh. Pick you one. don't even, you don't have a clue what you're talking about. Oh, I do. No, you and don't. Also, if you're, no, you're, if you're just you're trying to, you're just trying to play gotcha different. with words. Okay, wait, not only that. You're playing you're word pro-life. games. Rich, 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 your income rich, to women rich, that have children rich, that are raped. Rich. So that way that child can rich, grow up that Rich, we're not, hearing, we're not hearing we're not hearing you rambling. Rich. You you realize ahead, you're just playing dumb word games? It's not word games. Yeah, I'm you are. Pro-choice. I'm pro-choice. I That's a word game. I don't care if you That's literally like, a word I don't game. Get, I don't care if you get the vaccine, I don't care if you wear a mask, I don't care if you get an abortion. You're pro-choice. You choose what you want to do with your body. It's not me. Where and is the baby is pro-choice? the baby the woman's body? Is the baby's body the woman's body? Is the baby in the woman's body? Yes. Is the baby the woman's body? Okay, then if they want it out, get it out. I can, I don't care if you use a Dyson vacuum to get it out. If is the baby's it, body is the baby's body the woman's body? Okay, let me ask you. Let me answer ask you, my question, survive? Rich. Rich. I already told you. You did not answer my question. Body. You did not answer my question. Okay, is the baby's ahead. body the, is the baby's body the woman's body? Yes, because it's connected to it. No, it's not the woman's body. Okay, so can it survive? It's connected the to it. Uterus? It's irrelevant. Can it survive? You did not answer my question. Uterus? You're dodging. I just told you. No, you did it's not. Connected to the you did not answer body. my question. Is the baby's body the woman's body? Yes or no? Yes, it's connected to it. See, yes, you're ignorant. 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 How is it ignorant? Because you just claim that the baby's body is the woman's body just because it's connected it's to it. It's part of the woman's body. No, it's not. Sorry. The baby is not part okay, of the can woman's it body. Survive without the uterus? Can it survive without staying in the uterus? That's irrelevant. It's not the woman's body. It's not irrelevant? Yes, it is. It's either yes or no. My, my question is either yes or no. Is the baby's body the woman's body? Yes. Sorry. No, it's not. That's how science See, you're works. ignorant. You don't it's understand science. To the body. I'm ignorant because I'm a biology major. You're a biology major, and you don't know that the baby's body is different, distinct it's from the woman's body. to the woman's body. Is it the baby's the body? Earth, is it the baby's body, or is it the woman's body? Part of the woman's body. Sorry. Is it the baby's Outward. body, or is it the woman's body? It's part of the woman's body. I'm sorry. See, you can't, you can't you answer like, the question. You don't like it. No, no, no. Like you, just can't, you just can't admit the truth because you're a question. simp. A simp? Yeah, you're a simp. Dude, you're a 40-year-old virgin telling somebody else that they're a simp. For, virgins aren't simps. Unless they're paying no, yeah, unless they're are. paying for a woman to unless they're paying for a woman to like do pornography, then that's simp. This is exactly why you <clears throat> don't really care for women. I don't know who hurt you in the past, but it's starting to show. Oh, you oh you care for women cuz you think that women should be able to kill the baby? Is I that know, your I care? Have, is that your care for a woman, women, Rich? I don't have the women's reproductive You care for a woman? To create laws for them. You care for a woman? Why would I? Would you want a woman creating laws for your shit? 
Hey, I'm hey, sorry. you can't cuss. Yeah. Uh, do you care for women? Do I care for women? 100%. Yeah. No, you don't. Why wouldn't... Wait, so you're... So basically... Let me tell you why you don't care for a woman. woman. Wait, your idea for a woman is to listen to what you say, speak when spoken to, don't have opinions, and don't have leadership roles, and should be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen cooking dinner at all times. Uh, let me tell you why you don't <clears throat> care for no, women. No, 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 no. That's exactly what you did. You didn't even answer the question. I said because let me. I'm t- I'm I'm in the middle of saying something, and you're trying to misdirect but you didn't the conversation. Answer the question. You can say what you wanted to say, but answer the question. Is that what you think women should do? The only job that a woman should do is be pregnant and shut up when, unless they are being spoken to by a man. Um, let me answer why you don't care for women. You okay, are you, you, you are such a question. you are such a simp that you will let women destroy themselves and and the man's children because you, you think mean, it's a woman's themselves. choice. You're a sucker. So so a woman who has been raped might as well have that child and go through everything that she has to go through to make you happy. Yes. What? And it's not Do to make it's not to make me know? happy. It's for her you best interest. If, if it's not just interest, to make me happy. It's for her best you know, interest, Rich. You know what's the best interest for a woman? Yes. You know. Yes. That's In why terms of abortion men, versus not abortion, yes. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. This is about anything. Uh, I would, yeah. You know more than a woman. And women like don't know said, what they want. Women don't know what's good for them. Women don't know what they want. Women don't know what they want. Right. Okay, that's another dumb thing to say, because... I have, a, know I, have a, I have a chat from a fellow scientist, Bubs Love, who oh, says... I don't care about their other super chat. Uh, no, it's not a super chat. It's, not, a, it's a text. I have a text from oh, Bubs Love. I don't Love. care about them. I don't care that you don't care. You're going to sit there and you're going to listen to my to the I'm text. Not talking to I'm going to put you on hold if you don't be they, quiet. Okay. They can call me if they want. No, 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 no. I'm just going to present some facts because you're an ignorant science major. Unique DNA Not is a science cr- maker, biology maker. S- biology is science, buddy. Unique no, D- you said I put him on hold. Unique DNA is created at the moment of conception. Rich rejects science. Thank you, Bubs Love. Nice to hear from you. And yes, Dr. Oz is a Muslim, according to Jay. Rich, man, what happened to you? How did you beco- become such a sucker for the women and the intellectualism? It's not being a sucker for a women. Yeah, you are. You think that women aren't equal? There's no such thing as equal. It? No, there's, they're not equal. What is it? 1900? Are they allowed to vote? They shouldn't vote. They should not vote. Is that your thing, too? They should not vote. No. They shouldn't hold... They we are in 2022, buddy. How, how are you confused about the year? It's the current year. It's so 2022. They, should, they, shouldn't, they shouldn't hold positions of power? Why are you confused about the year? No, I'm asking you. These are your things. This they should not hold positions about. of power, correct. Why are you confused okay. about the year? No, I know years. I'm then how come you say, what is this, 1921? <laughs> 1908. Oh, okay. Before women took so, uh, It was 1918, to to? something like that, or something. Yeah, we should definitely so, get that back. That was a mistake. So letting women vote was a mistake. Right. Letting women hold positions of power was a mistake. Right. Letting women run countries was a mistake. Yep. How many wars have been started by women? Uh, very many. The women are behind. Women are behind. Wait, 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 the men. wait, wait, wait! I'm asking you, what woman in power started a war? Many of them. Name one. Uh, Merkel. Angela Merkel. Angela Merkel. What war did she start? She started all kinds of wars. She started a war on her well, own country. One? The war on her own country. The war on Germany. I mean, granted, what, she just extended she it. Last, there was a war on Germany I- since. A hundred years ago, maybe. Last time I checked, Germany didn't have a civil war in the last, I don't know, 20 years. Oh, that's because you're ignorant. You don't realize that there is a war on every white country in, in the world, practically. No, okay, well, until you come with you're the ignorant. facts of uh, you're ignorant. a woman starting a war, all wars were mostly started by you know that that's a You know that's a that's woman's happened. talking point, right? What are you talking about? You saying, men start all the wars. Well, isn't it true? It's a woman's talking point. War isn't isn't but always bad. There is a time for war. I'm not asking you if it's bad. I'm asking you. So if it's then, why true. are you even bringing it up, trying to say that oh, women do belong in power because men because started you're not all the wars? The question. So, is are, it you, true or are you? Are you? I don't want to ask that question. 
you don't want to answer the question. No, I said I don't want to ask that question. I almost asked something personal about you, but anyway. Don't worry about what me, dude. You're not going to offend me. Oh, good. Nice. How come you listen to my show? How come I listen to your show? Yeah, because I see you in the chat pretty regularly. Shout out to the Facebook crew. Yeah, I talk. Yeah, how did you find it? What do you mean? Somebody told me to listen to it. Nice, man. Somebody told me to call in. Right on. That's cool. It's not like I'm an avid listener. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, you know, when you hit the mute button and then you listen to a different podcast while you're talking so you can chat with your friends, you do that. (laughs) So you claim. So I claim, so I do. Uh, but I mean, how, like, then how did you know all my positions on women in power? Women in power? So I was listening to the people in the chat. Okay, buddy. So you claim. Anyway, yeah. to, to jump back on how you think that women are inferior. I didn't say inferior. Okay. What do you mean inferior? Well, why wouldn't they have the right to vote or have the right to have positions? Oh, they're power? inferior. They're inferior in at making decisions. Yes, they're inferior at they're that. Inferior on making decisions. Right. So they ha- can't even be trusted with decisions. Right. Did you know that they they are the reason that there are progressives in the government? Women voting is the reason why many progressives have taken power in the U- United States. What's your problem with progressives? Because progressives are evil. They're communists. They're not progress. They're progressing towards hell. They the think like they think like hell. women. I don't, they think like you. <laughs> I don't believe in a sky daddy, so you can go ahead and take oh, okay. it somewhere else. All right. <laughs> are you, you know, are you a Reddit bro? <laughs> sky daddy. Am I what? I a Reddit bro. Sky daddy. Am I read Reddit that on bro? the next door no. app too. Their sky daddy. Their sky daddy told them that abortion is wrong. So how do you justify killing babies? How do I? Again, yeah. it's not my choice. It's not your choice, but it's the it. woman. The woman is God to you, then, huh? It's Look, the woman's if, uh, choice. If you're, so, if, you're, if you're literally so pro-life, I don't see you adopting any kids. I don't have to. It's the, it's the woman's responsibility and the man who laid down with her. No, well, some kids that are, need to be adopted that don't have either There's plenty of people who want to adopt out there, Rich. I don't I have don't to adopt. I don't see you opening up your door. Why should I? Why should I? Why is it my responsibility? Oh, I, I why is it? Hold so on, Rich. Uh, Rich, let me answer the question. Why is it my responsibility for a slutty woman to get pregnant and me have to raise her kid just because she wants to kill the baby? And I say, no, you can't. Automatically, automatically a slutty woman. Yeah. Why is it my responsibility? Because right? an, irris- woman, an irresponsible, woman. loose woman got pregnant and she wants to kill the baby. And, I, and since I say no, I have to raise the baby. That makes no sense. You're not being logical. Mr. Biology so Major. Are you, so are you for, I don't know. Why is it my responsibility? Answer why it's my responsibility. Oh, you're pro-life. You care about that life, right? Enough not to let her kill it. And then it's her responsibility Enough? to oh, raise it. After that, after the baby, you're not pro-life. You're pro-being born. Yeah, because then, the bo- the then the baby's alive. Yeah, because once, once, once it's born, you can care less after that. Yeah, because that's her responsibility. Oh, so you're not really pro-life. You're pro. No, that's life. That's li- what you think no, the baby's going to starve. You're, you're you're pro being born. How you're many people pro-life. are starving in America, Rich? A lot. No, there's nobody starving in America. You're lying. You're ignorant. Really? There's no. There's nobody starving in America. Yes, there's Have nobody starving in America of except through mental poverty illness. Poverty and hunger. There is not hunger in America, America man. I said poverty and hunger. Po- there is no poverty in America. There's no poverty in America. The right. Homelessness the homelessness. There homelessness is, no is not poverty. So people choose to be homeless. Yes. I'm not sure how to even say that's an ignorant statement without calling You're people. the one who's claimed that there's people starving in America. Oh, you're pro there them are. being born. There's After that, they can starve. No, after that, you don't why why care. don't you want women to be responsible? Women women can be responsible. Then why, why do you want why them to kill the baby? Why don't you go get a vasectomy if you don't want kids? Why don't they create? I want kids. I don't want a vasectomy. That's disgusting. Oh, it's irreversible. So once you're able to pay for that kid, irreversible you doesn't mean reverse. Irreversible means it can't be reversed, buddy. You mean reversible? I said it's reversible. No, you said irreversible. 
Oh, made a mistake. All right. When it wasn't the first time. And not the worst mistake. No. <laughs> Look, I have a kid of my own. Wow. I feel for it. I got one. I, I have a kid of my own. You married? Right. What? You married? I was. Oh, okay. You were married when you had the kid? Yeah. Wow. Very responsible, Richard. Who divorced whom? What, what different? Wait, what difference does it make if I was married or not? Because in marriage, you're supposed is when you're supposed to have sex oh, and babies. Okay. Because your guy. Who divorced whom? There was no divorce. Oh, so you're just separated. There was no separation. So you, oh, she died. There you go. But that's a separation, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's so your wife really died. A separation. So you're a widower. I'm widowed, I guess. A man who is widowed is a widower. Just a little Doesn't English matter. lesson for you. Yeah. Well, anyway, are you fat or, or fit? I'm fit. Why would I be fat? Mm, a, lot of, a lot of liberals are fat. Um, a lot of liberals are fat? <laughs> yeah. I, guess you haven't seen, I guess you haven't seen the conservative party right now. I've seen some fat conservatives. You know, the, the beautiful South, we need to get fit. Uh, I myself need it still to this day need to get fit, but thanks man. I appreciate okay. call me again sometime We've been chatting a lot And I appreciate yeah, I know. it. It's okay that you're wrong though. Yeah, same to you. I Wish you and your son or daughter daughter uh, You know what JLP you ever heard of Jesse Lee Peterson? No Jesse Lee Peterson is, uh, I'm on his network, and he says that real men make boys first. Sorry to say. Real, real men make boys? Yeah. Does he have kids? Yep, and he has a son. He made a son. Does he have a daughter? Uh, no, not by, not by birth. Not by birth? Yeah. Oh. So, uh, had, so you're not, I guess you're not a real man, Rich. Kids. Yeah. But, I'm pretty sure I'll live. Yeah, San Francisco, buddy. You grew that. You grew up there. Yep, born and raised. Wow. Well, um, we shall talk again sometime if you decide to call. Yeah, maybe. All right. Take care, man. You too. Adios. He never heard of JLP. Somebody else. Somebody told him to catch my show. Nice. Shout out to Rich and shout out to the Facebook crew. Nice. We are past. Well past. The top of the hour, guys, and it's hot in here, and I will get to more calls. I have more of this Huffington Post thing to share with you, and then Black's idea of a funeral. Oh, my gosh. But now is the time for some music. It's Frog Eyes time. You all, li- you all love Frog Eyes. This is track 10, the second to last track on the Ego Scriptor album from 2004 on Absolutely Kosher Records. This is Carrie Mercer's acoustic album, acoustic versions of... Songs that appear on other other albums. This is this track is entitled "Snow." Tr- oh, sound travels from the snow to the dark by Frog Eyes. Cover your ears, you musical philistines. Press mute, or grin and bear it, or go shovel snow, or rake leaves. I guess you don't do either. Go plant your garden, uh, or enjoy. Sound travels from snow. From the Snow to the Dark by Frog Eyes. And I'll be right back for the rest of Hour 2. Hang tight. Radiance in the earth, in the sky. It's in the portrait of the moon pie. And when you cry, it hears you cry. Lullabies, la 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 la. It's in your home, the wandering road moves away. From sounds from caves It's in your hand A lovely band A friend that's canned Here's your sobs round When it can Lose your heart Makes a song It sings a static Upon your teeth And in your car You feel it sing You feel it's love It's all the best friend Could have had from the sky and when it snows, the waves will fall and fall around your lovely skin. And from your car, you drive.
drive around in the dark, dark. You see it's blue light turning on and on. Ooh, radio signals are. Oh, oh, my. Ooh, radio signals are. Was that not so good? Oh my gosh, so good. Where's the rhythm at, though? <laughs> a beta Eddie Vedder. Is Eddie Vedder the guy from like Pearl Jam? Is that Pearl Jam? Yeah, Eddie Vedder's Pearl Jam. Yeah, he's is reminiscent of that uh, that sound. I think my ears are bleeding. Says Ashley over there in the Facebook chat. Shout out to the Facebook crew. Shout out to the uh, people who. Uh, who tune in and recommend others tune in. Very cool. Just tuned in. See this. Okay, I'm going to head out now, says John Jones. Ah, Got a garden to tend to, says Luca. My ears are bleeding. Another person. Gay bar music. What the? Oh, come on. That's not what it is. Although up in Victoria, Canada, who knows? Get ready for some ear rape. Abort it, Rich, says <laughs> Lord Farquaad music. Uh, terrible. Um, well, thank you guys for bearing with me through that. Were they on Tarantino's record label? <laughs> Asks uh, Big Bump. Yeah, reminiscent, huh? And speaking of that, let me read a bunch of super chats that came in before I get back to calls and stories. This is a weak male moment, says Big Bump. This guy is getting more feminine with each of his talking points. Pathetic. <laughs> Referring to Rich. Shout out, Rich. I really liked talking with him. Interesting, guys. Um, okay. Brandon M. says with a super chat on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the Hake Report, all abortion is is a safety net for women's prospicu- promiscuity. Can I read? All these boo-hoo stories make up less than 2% of reasons for abortions. This is from data compiled from states where you have to give reasons for abortions. 98% are elective. Wow, I've, I've read elsewhere 92%, and then the other 6% are, uh, like, social or economic reasons. And then the rest of it are less than 1%, way, way less than even one-tenth of 1% in most cases. Take responsibility for your poor choices, ladies. As Medora with the super chat, removed. Hang up on Rich for complaining. We need discipline around here. <laughs> uh, I don't think these clumps of cells disturbed society in any sort of way to go to a jury to decide whether they live or die, says Brandon M. It's neat, says uh, Asmodor, how pro-abortionists feel they get to define what pro-life is for pro-lifers. Yeah. Because this rich guy was saying, it's hypocritical of you to be uh, pro-death penalty for murderers and legitimate rapists. Um, Forcible legitimate rapists. 
uh, and to call yourself pro-life. Just like when non-Christians think they get to define what Christianity is for Christians. Yeah, you hear a bunch of atheists pretend that they know what Jesus would be for, or dumb liberals. Uh, ask them how many genders there are. Yeah, they love criminals, it's true. They love criminals and hate babies and, and fathers and men. And they honestly hate the blacks. We all know that they really do hate the blacks and women that they pretend to simp for. How many genders there are? I should have asked him that. Alphonse Lutz. Lutz. Asmador with the super chat. The 19th Amendment. That's women's so-called suffrage. And believe me, they brought some serious suffrage into America. Suffering. But anyway. Uh, the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. Rich sure ain't a history major. Yeah, he was saying 1908, something like that. Wow. We're using may language made... <laughs> Thousands of years ago. So what year is it? Uh, is it 2000 BC? <laughs> Asks Danny's. Commander Kim says, As a whammon, I can absolutely attest whammon don't know what they want and don't know what's good for them. If they did, whammon depression wouldn't be skyrocketing, a direct correlation with the education and work level. Yeah, I know. I got another chat from a friend who said, There's literally a meme about women not knowing what to eat. 1920s, about the time women were happy. Yeah, and even then they weren't happy. They were flappers. The 1920s, some of the women were out of control. Uh, Asmodor with a super chat. Our resident historian over there on Odyssey. Brandon M is honorable mention for our second resident backup historian. <laughs> well, I just downgraded uh, Brandon M. Asmodor states with a super chat. Margaret Thatcher started the Falklands Islands, Falkland Islands War. Margaret Thatcher. And here I was, thinking she was so great. Well, maybe it was a decent war, I don't know. Falkland Islands. F-A-U-L-K-L-A-N-D. Falkland Islands War. Margaret Thatcher. There you go, buddy. Oh, I wouldn't have supported Margaret Thatcher. She was conservative. She's not a socialist. <laughs> uh, Danny says, call her. You can't offend me while feeling offended. Ledge Klinger with a super chat says, To the dip blip. Using pro-life literally, to literally use pro-choice would allow medical freedom, in s including from vaccine and mask mandate. Did he support those? He claimed not to care whether we get uh, vaccines or wear a mask. I don't know. So maybe he's sensible on that. Don't know. His logic in that argument shows his density. There's more to pro-life than the term itself. Yeah. Because if you're pro-life, you're pro-killing the murderer... To stop the murderer from murdering, and it's a deterrent. And we need swift justice. Collar is a woman, isn't he? Ask him how many w women voted for Hitler. Please, ask him. <laughs> oh, and it were a lot, says Alphonse Lutz. This caller, this caller is going to lock himself in his cry closet for days after this call. Starving people in America? This guy is from a rich family. He's never been to a Walmart. Ledge Klinger with a super chat. And these idiots using pre-viability, meaning the baby wouldn't survive without the woman, as an excuse for killing the baby for abortion, are the same clumps, or chumps, I mean, not clumps, uh, same chumps who would do everything possible to save the life of an abandoned baby squirrel. It's not about viability, it's about trying to be equal to men. Taking care of business says, not all vasectomies are reversible. PSA for you guys. <laughs> well, I'm not that anybody should ever even do it anyway. Um, true. Depends on the length of time after the vasectomy was performed. Uh, Dan E says, I'm from the beautiful south and I'm not fat. Oh, well. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Catherine the Great, says Asmodor, our resident historian, started the wars with the Crimean, with Crimean Khanate and Ottoman Empire. Elizabeth of Russia usurped the throne during a military coup from the young Tsar Ivan, or Ivan, sorry, I'm thinking Spanish, Ivan VI, who was only one year old and led the country, this woman, during the two major European wars, War of Austrian Secession and Seven Years' War. Wow. Crazy. Uh, 
Um, more, yet more super chats. Lin Yen Chin says, hypocritical, hypocrite, and hypocrisy are empty words that encapsulate irrational tangents of guilt, shame, and ridicule with the righteous indignation of whichever effeminate mess employs the intellectual terms that mean nothing else but gotcha. Yeah. Talk, Cause he was saying I'm hypocritical. <laughs> Lin Yun Chin says, because he tried to say, you're 100% pro-life. I knew where he was going. Um, Lin Yun Chin says, can't walk through life without being oblivious, a.k.a. ignorant, to more than you can ever know, but women inside the bodies of, whoa, women inside, I don't know if I want to read this, the bodies of black men used to blast the woman term ignorant as a curse. Oh, black men who are women on the inside use the term ignorant as a curse. The same happens with hypocrite. We are all hypocrites. Why mention it? Fair enough. Almost done with these super chats, guys. There's a ton of them. Single mom says, Rich, nice. Uh, Rich asks about women starting wars. You know, the same women who are so strong-willed they can't even prevent an unwanted pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. Lin Yun Shin says, Being able to cultivate character is cha- ever-changing the trajectory of refining moral integrity. This invariably contrasts your earlier being equals hypocrisy that you might not even notice because you don't remember the past. It is woman noise to point out hypocrisy. Noise Art Kansas is rich, so insufferable, his wife died just to get away from him. Wow. <laughs> cold. Very cool that he called in to reiterate middle school arguments. Liberals get spoon-fed. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Shout out to Noah's Ark, Kansas. And that's that for the Super Chats. Let me get to Serge, a first-time caller in Missouri. Serge, how are you doing in Missouri? Are you there? How are you? Hey, I'm fine. Hello? Yeah. um, Yeah, shout out to the Wrecking Crew. Um, Nice. I found found you on Asmodore in uh, Modern Day Debate, and and I've really enjoyed your political transformation over the years. Oh, uh, cool, man. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, so I, uh, I'm calling because I, I called into Jesse Lee Peterson's show earlier today, also for the first time, and your first caller floated me today. Um, floated you? Know you? Well, well, he quoted me. And you, oh, he uh, quoted you. Flight. Oh, yep. yeah, you called in and you said that more women are pro-choice, like 98%, yeah. than, uh, than you so, may realize. Yep. Yeah. So basically the 98%, it was just an estimation. Right. Like I can't, it, but it, it's more like it. Our, to kind of challenge our side with these platitudes that we have about women, right? You know, so-called women, because like, and they're just as pro-choice as Democrat women. That's my point. And guys on our side make the mistake of believing that women think like us when they don't at all. And yeah, it's just a classic. It's just a classic mentality to like take women at their word but not their deed. So like, yeah. Um, like they believe that like, that only Democrat women have abortions. That only. Uh, single women have abortions. That married women don't have abortions. It's like, it's not true. Yeah. And um. Well. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought you'd have a little more to say on that. No, I mean, well, it is. It's it's a lot. Uh, it's it's very true. These, I, I notice that women will just cave on stuff, even if they, even if you. Then you call them on it, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. And then they will write themselves again. Meaning that they aren't really, but they're so, like, they're weak. They're, they're able to be pushed by, the, by basically their emotions in some ways. And also by their intellect. Because they can be intellect, they're intellectuals. So they will rationalize evil and rationalize doing something that they don't really want to do. And men, men who are men aren't like that. And it's the job of men to protect women from that type of stuff rather than kiss up to them, call them such a based woman, and let's vote for this black female for Congress or Senate (laughs) just because she's a rape baby who didn't get aborted or whatever and black and female. Gotcha, libs. So it's it's pretty pathetic. Well, I mean, I don't... I, I don't think the abortion issue is so much of women being weak. I think it's more like it's their prerogative to have all of these options because they, 
they just don't think like us. Like whenever whenever we want to marry a woman, we you know we think of it as the rest of our life. But they, the women aren't thinking like that. Just like they're if they get pregnant, they're not thinking about motherhood. They're thinking about like, okay, what if I don't want this anymore? Like they're even if they're Republican. So it doesn't matter if they vote Republican because it's, like abortion was already baked into the cake. Just like it's like immigration is baked into the bipartisan cake and desegregation, all of this. So if you, it doesn't matter if yeah. you vote one way or another. It's already you know it's already consensus. And so. Yeah, it doesn't change any of that, and and like I don't like the abortion is just the tip of the iceberg. Is, have you ever heard of safe haven laws? Safe haven laws? No. What yeah, is that? It, it's when, it's when women can just drop off their newborns at like a fire station or a police station. Oh. Otherwise, so they so put it this way: women are so violent to their children, like that they had to just change the laws, like decriminalize that stuff, because otherwise, half of women would be in jail from like dumping their baby in a dumpster. Yeah, because they don't they don't want to uh, take care of the baby, or they get frustrated, they can't take the stress, and so they do something crazy to kill the baby or whatever, so that they don't have that responsibility. Yeah, and meanwhile we have to pay child support if a woman decides she doesn't want to be married to us anymore. Yeah, and then the child yeah the child support thing is such a racket. She doesn't even use it on the child. No, it's it's so wrong. We yeah, we totally and- we truly you're right. The both Republicans and Democrats have have an upside down world where the women is the woman is god they treat the woman like she's god and and she wants to play god that with the abortion thing yeah like, who gets delivered up. yeah it's it's totally a fair point man we'll see what happens with as this well, thing goes forward but like jesse said it's not going to change that much even when they no. get rid of this uh Supreme Court thing. It may help. It may help. It's it's the right that part aspect of it is the right direction, but he makes a great point. I don't know if you heard him and the experts two days ago, I guess it might have been, saying how bad it was that they even let this thing leak or that somebody leaked. It's it shows the decline. It's it shows that white men are not running the show anymore. Because white men, no. white Christian men would not let this thing leak. They're they're professionals. And they stick with what's right. They just keep things orderly. They don't just bend and break the rules for politics. The money changers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I, um, I just wanted to make a, one last thing about, um, like, this, even, even if this passes or whatever, it's still not going to really change anything because abortion is still legal in most states. And, like, and if you even read what some of these, formal laws that have been passed in these Republican states are yeah. they're basically like uh, they're basically based on the Nordic model of um, prostitution in Scandinavia, like where the 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 John is criminalized, but the hooker is not. <laughs> and it's so like yeah, and, and and so like these in these states, the the abortion doctor he's criminalized, and um, even yeah. the Uber driver who's who's hoodwinked into dropping her off at like a Burger King next door is, is punished, wow. but the woman is not. Who caused all of this? That's so wrong. That's why I loved when Trump said, but he he went back on it. But he yeah. was he said women should be punished once abortion is outlawed. They should be punished. And then the whole so called pro life women world and Republicans, so called conservatives, males, said, Oh no, that's not right. You can't punish women for it. It's men's it's all men's fault. It's so wrong. We have to punish women and hold them responsible just like God held the woman responsible for what she did. She, God held the man responsible, and he held the serpent responsible for each where each one did wrong. But these other, these woman worshipers, female-minded males and females, Satan-minded, like you said, they will, they'll, only the, only the prostitution buyer, not the prostitute. Wow. Terrible. Yeah. How old are you, if you don't mind my asking? 32. Nice, man. Well, I appreciate yeah. you checking out Hake and Jesse. Well, I assume Jesse, too, over the years, over the last, you said five years you've been? Well, no. Well, actually, today's my first day I actually listened to your guys' show, but I've heard you on, like, the Crypto Report and Hake yeah. in, um, in a Modern Day Debate and all that. But, okay, nice. Yeah, like, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, just one last thing I wanted to say. Um, You don't have to agree with this or not, but I think this whole... I don't expect anything to change with uh, the Supreme Court, any of this stuff. It's more like 
it kind of just cuts to the absurd absurdity of democracy itself in my opinion. Like I think it's just a huge transfer of wealth and power from man to woman, from white to non white, from heterosexual to homosexual and to Christian to Christ killer. That's just my opinion. Uh yeah, it is kind of all for show, huh? It's yeah. It's just something to it's like a shiny object. There's a I mean, the abortion issue gets people riled up. You, you, heard, you heard me get all riled up with the rich w- towards each yeah. other. And it's exciting, but it's all ego. It's not changing how things are really happening. That has to happen no. within the heart of the, the man himself. The battle is already over because the, the, all the lives that are lost are already gone. And people don't even, women to barely even use abortion, like one fourth of what they used to. So it doesn't. Right. Kind of, yeah. I mean, there's so much, much else wrong. There, we have pornography. People are not even making babies. People are doing birth control. And the birth control yeah. is subsidized thanks to Obamacare. You're right about that. Yeah. All right. Whew. Thanks for taking my call. A pre- and, it, and Surge, it's S E R G E. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, yeah, Serge. Serge. Oh, okay. I'm sorry I mispronounced it. Serge. It's not my real name anyway, but... Yeah. Oh, okay. What, yeah. what country is Serge name come from or it's, something? You know, I mean, that one is French, but there's a lot. I mean, there's like different versions of it from all these different European countries. Nice, man. Well, call me yeah. again sometime. I, I enjoyed talking with you. Great points. All right. Thanks. Thanks, James. All See right. See you later. Take care. Before I get to William in California is coming up next. Uh, do you want to hear more of this Huffington Post article? Do you want to hear more of it? Well, too bad you're going to hear more of it. Because <laughs> I want to, like, some of it was just remarkable. So I remember reading through it yesterday, and it was, like, exciting to me then. So we'll see how it comes across today. This is from that Huffington Post article that I mentioned at the beginning of the show. I, it, it took me 14 minutes or 12 minutes plus to get through it from Julia Rees, at least the first section. On assignment for Huffington Post, what, do- what doctors want you to know about abortion right now, and it's in their wellness, healthy living section. They say, uh, I already read to you about what people get wrong about abortion. Restricting abortion impacts people's health and health and livelihoods. <laughs> yeah, the babies. Um, evidence shows that being denied an abortion, according to Julia Rees and the, her two female experts that I mentioned at the beginning of the hour, last hour, uh, has a devastating impact on one's physical health, mental health, and overall well-being. The Turnaway study conducted by scientists at the University of California, San Francisco, where Rich hailed from, from which Rich hailed, uh, found that women who carry an unwanted pregnancy to term have a four times greater chance of being below the federal poverty level. Like, that's such a bad thing. They're, They're more likely to experience serious health complications such as eclampsia, and death, and to develop mental health issues. Eclampsia, I think, is, I forget what it is. It's some health issue. Lisa can tell you over there on Facebook. Go over to facebook.com slash the hate report. Check out the live feed from today's show, and maybe she'll tell you what eclampsia is. I looked it up. I forget what it was. And to develop mental health issues, including anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. Yeah, like baby killer women don't do that, too. They're more likely to stick with an abusive partner. What are they, good? Their life goals tend to take a back seat. Oh, the horror. Women's egotistical, false, misery-inducing, what is that word? Uh, Ambition takes a back seat. God forbid your own selfish ambition takes a back seat. And their family's livelihood suffer because of a baby. Many go on to experience chronic pain. (laughs) Uh, The health and welfare of citizens in this country suffer. We see increased illness. We see increased poverty. and We see increased death, says Kearns. I don't know what she's talking about, this Kearns woman whom I showed you. I think it's Jennifer Kearns out of UCSF, if I remember correctly. A recent study predicted predicted that banning abortion will lead to a 21% increase in pregnancy-related deaths. That jumps to 33% among black women. 
and they capitalized the B in the word black because they're kissing up to blacks. Let me fix that. Brack, open bracket, lowercase b, close bracket. Black. Because it's lowercase b, black. Um, yeah, it's, pr- it's quite predictable that more women will die giving childbirth because more women will be giving childbirth. So, yes, more women will die giving childbirth rather than die, in abor- die while committing abortions or whatever. Material mortality rates are at an all-time high. It reminds me of Obama's thing with the gun control. If this saves just one life, let's violate all the, right, the rights of the people and then let them be ducks in a barrel. So it'll save one life here, but more people will be killed here. And also we'll be violating people's rights. And uh, we'll be mama helicopter parent government taking away the guns from the people with the gun control stuff, right? Oh, let's keep abortion because more women will die giving birth to children otherwise. Not a logical argument. Eileen says, hey, abortion is 100% men's fault. Father's failure. Women cannot make such huge decisions. You got to blame both for what each does. You're right. Women can't make such huge decisions. They should. It's not even up. Like the, like the based black Republican woman's. Uh, mother said, who's 11 years older than her, or 12, um, it's not even a choice. It's not even a choice. And you are right about that, Eileen. But I say it's both more than a... It's the man's fault for what he did, it's, or doesn't do, the woman's fault for what she does. Gotta blame both. Gotta hold both responsible. <laughs> Fear MJ says, told ya, he hates the capital B's in black. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> Fear MJ, uh, I think it might be a hater. Um, but anyway, oh, Fear Marcus Jones probably. That's Marcus Jones, huh? Uh, he has no respect, but that's okay. But that's okay. Um, a recent study predicted that banning, oh, I already said that. Mater- maternal mortality rates are at an all-time high. So claims this article. I don't believe that maternal mortality rates, meaning the mother dying, is at an all-time high, but the United States already has the highest maternal death rate among developed nations. Probably partly because we're fat, we being, you know, American women are fat, partly because we got a lot of blacks more than other developed nations, maybe, Um, and a lot of the blacks are unhealthy. Um, Also partly because we let in so many of the third world into our country, and so... uh, I think that may be partly why, and also because our so-called healthcare is a racket, just like the other socialized healthcare. Ours is a little bit less, it's different, but ours, I heard, focuses less on prevention and actual, you know, health of, and liveliness, and so that's probably partly why maternal death, maternal death rate is high. That's not a reason to keep abortion, dummies. That crisis would only get worse without access to safe abortion care. No, they didn't say abortion care in that case, but they call it abortion care. Uh, there are some women who get pregnant who get pregnant who could die if they continue with the pregnancy, and therefore an abortion is a life-saving procedure in those circumstances, said this Simon woman. Simon says woman. Adding that those circumstances are not rare. Yeah, they are. Abortion in many cases can save the life of the mother. They are rare, and... All pro-lifers are for it in that case. Lisa says, hey, preeclampsia is a dangerous prenatal condition slash complication relating to the mother's high blood pressure. Okay, I thought that it had something to do with, with blood, as I recalled. Thank you, Lisa. Can be quite dangerous. They induce labor early sometimes. Eclampsia. Well, she called it pre, preeclampsia. So that's eclampsia. And that will go up if they get rid of abortions. Uh, but anyway, um, here's what could fall if Rome could, if Roe, well, here's what the fall of Roe could mean for health care, says this Huffington Post article. Much of the language used in abortion restrictions and bans like abortionists really deeply divides people and shames those who get an abortion or provide an abortion. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> Should shame them. Simon says, 
The potential fall of Roe reflects the crisis in women's health care, specifically when it comes to maternal health. The end of Roe could, would mark a war against women and people who can get pregnant. <laughs> there they added that in, people who can get pregnant, who, for the record, comprise over 50% of the U.S. population, she added. Simon is exceedingly concerned. I think, I forget what the first name is, this woman, woman expert. Simon is exceedingly concerned about what will happen to the growing maternal death rate if Roe falls and safe abortion care becomes harder and harder to access. That is what I'm very worried about in this country, that we are going to go even more into the wrong direction than we already are with respect to caring for over half our population, women. That's it, that Simon woman said. For show that Simon woman one more time. Uh, what's her name again? It's Jennifer Kearns and Melissa Simon. It is Melissa Simon. And who knows, maybe she's bringing up a legit, legit, too legit, legitimate uh, concern about uh, some of this stuff. But abortion is not the solution, lady. Lady, and I use the term loosely. Happy to oblige, says Lisa, our resident uh, medical expert. Over there on face in the Facebook crew, even though she's a woman, <laughs> I'm gonna show you this black. F- oh no, I already said that. I'm gonna show you this uh, funeral story. But first, I gotta get to William in California. William in California, how are you doing? Thank you for holding. Hey, good morning, James. How you doing, bro? Doing fine. How are you? I'm all right. You know, um, I think that. You know, this thing was leaked on purpose, man. These This behavior, they went bananas. I seen on the news where they were throwing bricks at the police cars down there in L.A. And um, if you believe in abortion, that's you. If you don't, that's you. I think that we have a real problem with respecting others' opinions. And that comes down to that First Amendment thing. It's like you're trying to take away people's freedom of speech. If you don't... But if you don't believe in the abortion thing, that's 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 fine. If you do, that's fine. I just don't. I think people have a hard time respecting each other's opinions. You know. Yeah. But, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not for abortion, and I don't think I should be crucified for that either. But I'm not for it, and I'd like to know how many women are getting aborted that were raped. What's the percentage on that? <laughs> I can. What's the per- I can pull that up for you. I was just looking at that. Um, I'd the, like to know. Um, as far as 0.085%, so less than one-tenth of 1% are uh, okay. abortions for the woman uh-huh. being raped. What about um, According incest? to this, an incest is uh, 0.001%, so one-thousandth mm-hmm. of a percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Res- pregnancy resulted from an incestuous relationship, or maybe they were ashamed to say. You know, they don't, they don't necessarily fill out the form, but uh, I don't know. But yeah, uh, I don't mean. It's, would it's you be for like they're pressing? And go ahead, James. Go would ahead. you be would you fee- be for abortion in the case of rape and incest personally? Or letting I'm the Catholic w- man, I, I'm not just not into that one, man. I mean, you, yeah. know, you asked me one time where I was, I was I Catholic, and I was like, I went to a Jesuit school, and I, yeah, I went to Catholic schools, and then I went to public schools too. I was not raised to believe in anything like that. That's yeah, just me. same here. That's just me. I'm not, you know, that's with respect to anybody. You know, that's just me. I don't, I'm not for it. I'm not yeah. for it, man. I've seen a lot of babies. I have a big family, extended family, and I only have one brother, but I have. Um, a big extended family, and I see babies all the time. I look at these little newborns, and I just look down at them, and I just like, hmm, how innocent. Yeah, cute little how babies. Innocent. How can you kill the little baby? I mean, you know, it just kind of like, you know, makes you look at them like, you know, how innocent. Look right. This. This, is a, this is a life, you know. But um, uh, uh, some good news is that Trump's, and Dorsey's are like ninety five percent of them are winning. That's cool, but are his in, his endorsees are not Trump himself though? You know, not, yeah, you, you're right on that one. You yeah, know, but, um, I think that the sixty million, sixty six million babies killed during abortions. I'm 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 glad you brought that up. Of how many come from rape and incest? Oh you know, yeah, so it's kind of. 
blown out of proportion. And I, I'm, I'm having a feeling that this thing was leaked on purpose because they're pressing the nuclear button. If you notice, they're just pressing the nuke button on everything. They're just going, they're going for the fence because I, I think that they uh, are pretty much uh, done as far as the uh, midterms. It's, it's, they, they know it's pretty much over. And I think this was like a swing for the fence. Yeah. Interesting point. They did say that it was the first thing Biden said. Oh, elections matter. Something to that effect, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. True. And uh, you, you, you call her from San Francisco. Uh, I am from San Francisco. I grew up in San Francisco. I own property in San Francisco. I don't live there anymore, but I could tell you, um, uh, he pretty he pretty lost with due respect to his opinion. He he's kind of lost, you know. Yeah. And I don't respect his people. opinion. I respect him and his right to that. Uh, yeah, dumb opinion. you know. I mean, it's <laughs> like you know he has a right to say what he wants or whatever, yeah. you know. But I mean, I think he's kind of lost. I mean, he made an he made a, an opinion about the homeless, you know. And you guys have it right there by your station down there in that area. I'll tell it, Nick. I'm like, you guys got all that stuff, those tents and all that stuff out there. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, uh, he's he's like, you know, um, should you know you, well, what do you what do you do with um, the homeless. What are you going to say about the homeless and the hungry? And you, I mean, you put it on them. There's nobody hungry in America. Yeah. Because right there in San Francisco, you got Cecil Williams, that uh, uh, Glide Church. They feed that. They feed the uh, that that area, the tenor line. They feed those people three times a day. That is shameful. And yes, it is they enabling feed them three times a day, and then they take their welfare money and they do drugs with it. So. I'm asking him. He's in the city. I rent to these people out there. Here's the deal. What do you want me to do? Because you're talking directly to me. You want me to empty out my buildings for people that are paying me good rent to give it to them for free? Is that what he wants? Yeah. That, no, that's socialism. My money has to be his money. Yeah, because his 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 biology major with all of that stuff. I know every school, high school, and college in San Francisco. And believe me, if he was paying for a private university in San Francisco versus maybe a public school, he, he would have a different opinion. He would have a different opinion. I know all the schools: City College, USF, San Francisco State, Hastings. I know all those schools. Wow. Hey, I, I don't, I'm going to tell you, man, I know what you are, who you are, when you do it. I see, I've been seeing this for a long time. San Francisco was a very good place to live and to grow up in. It's cool, real cool. Not anymore. But when the cuckoos, when the cuckoos started taking over, it's going down, man. The tourists are getting the hell knocked out of them upside the head when they go over to Lombard Street to see the crookedest street in the world. They go and take pictures of that thing. They sit on top of the hill. Ten minutes later, boom, they get knocked upside the head. People are like we said the other day, they're leaving their cars unlocked. Yep, open, wide open, saying, don't steal from me. Terrible. Yeah, you know, and and I, like I told you last time I talked to you about this you know, surveillance camera thing. I'm not getting the kind of surveillance cameras put on my buildings. I'm not getting the setup where you got a cassette tape or a VHS and you sit up there and look at it 10 days later after somebody gets knocked upside the head. It's a little bit different now. It's a little bit more high tech now. It's like real time. You can get pretty, pretty nice where I can go into my office right here at home and see exactly what's going on with those people. That's I cool. don't want anything to happen to those people because I feel kind of responsible for them. If they don't feel safe and they write me a letter in the email, Email and say we don't like we're, we're un- we feel unsafe. They don't even live in. I don't have bad neighborhood play. They're not in bad neighborhoods, but it's getting out of control. Francisco geographic. Well, San Francisco is very very small. Yeah, and you can walk from the slum to the rich to the area. riches. <laughs> Terrible. Yes, you can. Wow. Yes, you can. So, I mean, I'm going to protect the ones that live in my places because they deserve that. Right. They do deserve that. They're paying to live where they live. They're not, they don't have tents. 
they're I know. paying for what they're renting, and I'm going to protect them. And yes, most of them are good old American white folk. Yeah, they are. That's okay. But they're paying me. It has nothing to do with what they're making a living off of. It has nothing to do with what they look like, gay, straight, woman, or man. When I got gotcha. you. pay me, I'm going to take care of you. Well, thank so, you, you know, Rich. I mean, thank you, uh, William. I almost called you Rich. <laughs> that's okay, man. <laughs> Take you know, care, but man. But let's just, like, you know, respect each other's opinion, you know? If that's what his opinion is, like you said, you respect him. Right. Let's just do that. Let's look into why is it that, why is it that every time a man calls in and doesn't agree with this left agenda, especially if he's black, and he doesn't like what's happening in the black community with these black mothers, with these black kids. If there's a black man that calls in and says he don't like it, he's got a right to say that. Yeah. Just stop attacking these people. I mean, this this guy is uh, rich in Virginia. Was it Virginia? He, he's the same way. He don't. He sees what's happening, and he's making he's making he's bringing his opinion on this stuff, and he's bringing it home when he says it. All right, William, take care, man. Take care. You take care, James. All right. All right. Um, man, was there any other Super Chats that I missed? Well, yesterday I missed a bunch of them. Okay, I think I can fit this in. Here is, guys, have to share this with you, that, as promised, viral videos, this is a report. It's not, not showing the viral videos. I'm not showing the graphic footage, but this is from USA Today and Fox 5 DC, clip 12. Hopefully this works. Viral videos of a slain rapper's body on stage at a nightclub send the social media into a frenzy. Three minutes long. Enjoy. And then I got to end. Hi, everybody. First up tonight on the News at 10, a celebration of life for a Maryland rapper is stirring up some controversy. Markel Morrow's loved ones hosted a viewing over the weekend at a D.C. nightclub. And now videos and pictures, they're surfacing all over social media of Morrow's body being prominently displayed. And in a Fox 5 exclusive, our David Kaplan spoke with the family. Well, good evening to you. The family tells me this is the exact celebration that they wanted to celebrate Markel Moreau's life. They planned it. They were celebrating on the stage next to his body. And quite frankly, they say they don't understand the controversy surrounding <laughs> all of this. Spoke with his mother tonight, who says she should be able to grieve exactly how she wants. Well, it's something I wanted to do. That's how Markel wanted me to do it. That's how he wanted to go out. He wanted to celebrate his life, turning up, having a party. He didn't want people to be sad and crying. He always wanted people to be happy and having fun. Moreau, who went by the stage name Gunu, was shot and killed in Prince George's County on March 18th. His death remains an open homicide investigation. There was an autopsy performed on his body. It was released to the funeral home. And the family tells me they wanted to have a celebration that they said properly reflected his life. This was at Bliss Nightclub at Northeast D.C. Fox 5 is not sharing images posted to social media, but I can tell you the body was upright on the stage. He was wearing jeans, a sweatshirt, and a crown as people celebrated around him. Moreau's sister says the family has received a lot of negative attention, but emphasized tonight, they don't care. Yeah, right. We want that message to be out. We celebrated the life of my brother how we want it. My brother was a legend. My brother was a king. And that's exactly how we wanted to go out. To clear the rumors in that place, my brother, they, the, the critics are it's, it's rude. It's very disrespectful. It's very <laughs> insensitive. If you do not like it, don't speak on it. Don't speak, don't on, speak it. on it. Don't it's how we, it. Let us grieve how Keep we want to grieve. Y'all. So in an Instagram post today, Bliss acknowledged that they worked with a funeral home about this, but they apologized to family, fans, and friends saying they that they were never made aware of what would transpire is the quote. We sincerely apologize to all those who may be upset or offended. We reached out to Bliss for more information on Instagram, but did not hear back from them. Moreau's murder remains unsolved in Prince George's County. Police offering a $25,000 reward for anybody with any information about this murder. Dead. 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 That's Joe Biden. Sorry, guys. 
I can't really comment on it because the show is over. Stop laughing, Hake. <laughs> I know. 24 years old. Rest in peace, young inward guh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you in the uh, God's Learning Channel throwback today, hopefully, 4 p.m. Pacific. See you tomorrow on uh, the, the Jesse Lee Peterson Show and the Hake Report. And uh, take care. Adios.